Welcome ladies and gentlemen, thanks for clicking on the video. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be going over how to survive as an enhanced shaman. Uh, little things I've learned and some, maybe a few tricks, hopefully. Uh, just keep in mind the situations do change or will change your playstyle and how you do the fight. Now, I showed this uh, clip before, but it's a good reference because basically the Beastmaster Hunter is just destroying me, putting tons of damage in me. Uh, we're not getting anywhere in the fight, so basically what I'm just trying to do is kite him, LOS him, hit anything to try and get procs, and live. And just hope that my rep paladin can help me. Now, we do come out on top, and as unlikely as that seems, I want to ch tell you guys pretty much how I did it. Now, the first thing is, like I said, hit anything. It doesn't matter. Pets, totems, uh, smack the he healer a couple times, doesn't matter. As long as you're hitting something, you have a chance to get a proc. Two is kite as much as you can, purge as much as you can, and LOS whoever is hitting you if if you're hitting somebody and you got a mage or someone else there, LOS them, always. So now in this arena, first I ground the Hodge, uh, because he wanted to just hit me and then pop all cooldowns. So what I do is run Glyph of Purging first, run around, uh, drop Windwalk, Healing Stream at the same time, purge all his uh, uh, selfless healing stacks, and just kite his, his damage as much as possible. The Warrior Blade Storm too, by the way, so if I just live, then we pretty much have the advantage, because the Ret is just slamming him as they're both trying to go me. So I'm just running around, kiting everything, slowing when I can. And then the enemy rep bubbles. And that's when I pretty much know that we won. Because I'm just topping myself off. We're both grand, and I still have all my cooldowns for when the bubble ends, which is now. Goes down, I pop all my cooldowns, and he pretty much just has no choice but to melt. Because he's not going to get a cast off. He's got no selfless healing stacks. So he tries to cast, kick it, kill him. Simple. Now, something I do uh, mainly against rets, but other classes as well, is run Glyph of Purging, which gives you a stack every time you successfully purge something. So, if I'm just purging all of his selfless healing stacks and all that, then I'm getting stacks off it no matter what, regardless if I'm hitting him or not. Another thing I do is, um, when I drop my totems, most of the time, I just run away from them a little bit of distance, because either A, they'll stop to try and kill it, which will give you the distance that you need to run away and heal, or B, they don't kill it, and you still have the totem. So it all works out no matter what. Unless it's cap totem, obviously you don't run away from that. So let's take this arena for example. So both of them have magic, so that means uh, Glyph of Purging is extremely useful. They do have bubble and block, but that's fine, as long as you're kiting, purging, and you have your totems. So I drop grounding, try and get something useful. Maybe I'll get a hodge again, but no, the paladin's waiting out the mage trying to get a, an opener. Doesn't work. I'm dropping Fire Nova over and over, seeing if I can get the mage out, but running over the tomb, he's forced to come out without getting anything really. I start purging, purging, trying to get all the buffs I can while LOSing. I get a shield right there, and then he instantly blocks. So when I saw this, I was like, it's pretty much over. Drop a uh, wind walk so that if he comes out and he's got the Ice Nova Glyph, we're good to go. He goes on him. I decide to stay on the mage and hit the pet for a couple quick stacks. He prismatic crystals. I trick it and get out of there real quick, and they overlap, so that's perfect. I just run away, start kiting, purging, uh, getting the stacks, and I jump on top of the mage again. Now, it looks pretty bad right here, but I pop cooldown, so regardless of the mage blinking away, he's still within hitting range, so I'm wind striking and, and auto attacking and still getting stacks, so it's perfect. He second blocks, and after that, I pretty much know that it's over, because they can't really do much to stop us, and the mage is pretty squishy. So I purge, the ret, again, still has no selfless healing stacks, kick the poly, and we finish him, like, no problem. He actually tries to bop him, down. and I'm continue purging, get it first off, and then down he goes. Okay, so now we're gonna test the Storm Elemental healing that it can do. Now, I have Primal Elementalist, so let's see how much. So, it starts off at 80% stronger, and it does this, which gives it a 300% healing increase. Now, 380%. Eight hundred crits, five hundred regular hits. That's an enhanced Ellie that casts a spell for increased healing. This is why I get so annoyed with the talents, and why I just don't see why this is useful in any way. This is the enhanced version, so I'm led to believe that non-primal elemental elemental is even worse. So that's that healing. So that was pretty disappointing, but some last minute uh, tips are one, uh, don't hesitate to use Shram Rage. It's only a one minute cooldown and uh, it does do the job. You can also glyph it to do an extra 30% damage reduction. It will increase the cooldown by a minute, 
but it'll that's like an 80 percent when you couple all of the damage reductions that's 80 percent damage less right there it uh most uh enemy offensive cooldowns are two minutes so just something to throw into the mix another is you can utilize flame of life glyph which is every flame shock you throw out there will do uh 45 percent of the damage will be healed back to you it's up to you if you want to do that um it's i feel it's good in bgs and rbgs because you can really spread them around while as threes and twos and it's just a couple so it may not be worth it but it's just one of those extra uh healing things you can do and the last one is use spirit wolves and uh storm ellie sort of preemptively so because most of the time you will get stunned before they start popping stuff to kill you so you won't have a chance to use them other than sham rage so if you use them at around like maybe 50 percent or even like 60 75 percent uh they will do the job at keeping your health sort of stabilized when you're inevitably in that stun or fear or whatever it is now i just want to apologize for the inconsistent videos i've been sick lately and i just have been sleeping a lot and headaches and all that blah blah you know how it is um i also want to say that i do have a twitter account and a twitch account so um you can follow my twitter and ask me questions there i always check it and it'll let you know when i do stream and i start streaming consistently again so thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed it, hope you learned something, and I'll be pumping out arena videos when I finally get a team, I'm on a dead server, and nobody's looking for enhanced shamans, and it sucks, but it will happen. Thanks guys.